I read article after article and research paper after research paper, and here's what I discovered. Not only am I a millennial, I'm a super millennial. <laughs> I'm like an 11 on a scale of 1 to 10 of the characteristics that make up my generation. So what is it? Why, when I remind people of my millennialism, do they counter my argument with anecdotes about maturity and leadership as if being a leader and being a millennial are mutually exclusive? And then it hit me. If most people think that being a leader and being a millennial cannot coexist, maybe they assume I must be different because they're judging me through a filter of leadership first and millennial second. For context, I've held high-level leadership positions for much of my career. At the age of 26, I was a CFO at a state agency. Now, at the age of 32, I'm a vice president in a Fortune 50 company. So while I had set out on this research journey to prove that to be a great leader, a millennial must be uniquely different than the average, what I found is that it's the characteristics of the average that make a great leader. One study I read even said, young leaders rank in the top quartile at a rate more than twice that of their older peers. And so I wonder, were millennials raised to lead? <laughs> now, depending on your own generational allegiances, you might be currently panicking about the idea of working for some 140-character talking spoiled brat whose parents told them they were special, no matter what they did. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> the reality is, millennials will make up more than 50% of the workforce by the year 2020, and will be the overwhelming majority by the year 2025. Now, I am certain that over the span of time, every generation has looked at the one coming up behind them and thought the world was going to hell. <laughs> but somehow, my generation has become the most studied in history. I think this is because we are quickly becoming the majority in the most multi-generational workforce in history. In many organizations, there are four generations working alongside each other right now at the same time. Boomers, Gen Xers, Millennials, and now even Generation Z. And this millennial takeover has been disruptive. In the 2016 Millennial Trend Report, 90% of American millennials said that they believe they could make a difference, they could make an impact in their country. And nearly two-thirds of those millennials had used social media in the last week to post about a cause that they were passionate about. This is just one way our generation is making a difference. We are cause-focused, cause-oriented social activists and entrepreneurs who are using technology and the globalization of the internet to create change. So yeah, we may be addicted to looking down on our phones, but it's what we're doing on those phones that matters. That's what's important to take into account. There's also plenty of research that goes to show that millennials aren't the superficial and materialistic consumers that many think we are. In fact, it's just the opposite. Over three in four millennials say that they would rather spend their money on experiences rather than stuff. Likewise, millennials are 23% more likely to travel internationally than those from previous generations. See, this memories over materialism attitude has created an entirely new industry, what's being called the experience economy. As millennials, we want to become embedded in new cultures, go on unique adventures, have unique experiences, try new food, meet new people. And so companies are popping up left, left and right to fulfill this demand for these unique experiences that we as millennials crave. This is all a byproduct of our generation of adventurers and world travelers who, yeah, want to go document it all on our Instagram and Snapchat. We want to travel. We need to travel. Give us the time off. Give us the vacation days to do it, or we'll go find somewhere that will. Now, for me, this is all just further confirmation of something that I've already known and I've already witnessed firsthand. Because when I think of millennials, I don't think of some pop culture sketch of the worst of the worst. You know what I think of? Real millennials. I think of the millennials, people that I know my age, people I've talked to, people I've met firsthand who show what it's actually like to be a part of our generation and not what society labels us as. One common stereotype is that us millennials cannot put down our damn phones. I'll admit, it is the last thing I check at night. It's the first thing I check in the morning, even before getting out of bed. But some people think that means that we are disengaged or disinterested in the real world outside of our 
technology and social media and the immediate gratification of people liking what we're doing, what we're wearing, what we're eating. But what those people are forgetting is that we were the first generation to be technologically connected. And with this connection comes great possibility. It is an asset to be connected to a global market you can leverage quickly for answers to questions you might have about your business. Because when you ask people on surveys who are over 30, when does adulthood begin? Full adulthood, they say 28, 27. When you ask people under 30, when does full adulthood begin? 27, 28. It's the one thing we all agree on. We all see it. We just didn't have a name for it. Parents say this, when I was 25, I had a mortgage and a kid. You need to settle down, quit turning your nose up at the wonderful people I find you and bring me some grandchildren. What is wrong with you? Right? Bosses are, how do we motivate them? They're not engaged. Yes, because this is not going to be their career for the rest of their lives. How do we keep them from leaving? Simple. The research is absolutely clear. A mortgage and babies. <laughs> That's when the boomers settled down. They just had a mortgage and babies earlier as the first generation to experience emerging adulthood. Technology has made our generation smaller than the preceding generations. We see the world as accessible, and we leverage this accessibility across a powerful network to help us think strategically, to anticipate trends and how those trends might affect our companies. It's this connection to our great networks in the sky that we can pair perfectly with the leadership mentality that we possess, collaboration. You see, millennials are the most educated group in human history. Never before have we invested so much in one group. So while prior generations grew up with this mantra of being seen and not heard, our millennials have had the opposite experience. Since birth, their development and their interests have been at the focal point of our attention. From mommy and me groups at age two to itty bitty soccer for four-year-olds, French language lessons for six-year-olds, the family schedule began to revolve around what the kids wanted and what the kids needed. So with trophies for everyone to protect that self-esteem, uh, these millennials, they've grown up with the idea that they have a voice and that they are important. So why then do we expect them to come into our classrooms and later our boardroom with this idea that they shouldn't have a voice, that they shouldn't have a say? This brings my favorite stereotype, entitlement. <laughs> the truth is we are less concerned with pay and status than previous generations. And we're actually disillusioned by these structures that emphasize title and tenure as being important to become a decision maker. You see, we report that our parents included us in decision making throughout our childhood at a much higher rate than any other generation. On the contrary, studies show that Gen Xers and Boomers value a more of a control and command management style and that they see their bosses as the experts. Millennials do not attach any one person in a hierarchy to having all the answers. But think about it. We've been able to quickly get answers to our questions our entire lives with devices that we hold in our hands. This means we look at knowledge and the path to gain it differently. We've been able to disconnect from the idea that time on job is a necessary part of the formula to gain the knowledge you might need to be an effective leader. I recognize that this is incredibly frustrating for some Gen Xers who have waited their seat for their seat at the table, or for some boomers who built these tables and then established all the rules for us to gain entry. <laughs> Equally as frustrating is that we reject traditional motivation tactics like pay increases and bonuses. Stereotype goes that we're unmotivated or that we're disloyal to companies. We are not unmotivated. We are motivated differently. We find our loyalties in the purpose of the work that we do for a company, 
not necessarily in the company itself. 30% of millennial managers said meaningful work is important. This compared to only 12% of Gen X and Boomer managers. An intelligence group study found that 64% of millennials said they would rather work for $40,000 a year doing a job they love than $100,000 a year doing a job they found boring. This might explain why we live with our parents at a higher rate. <laughs> also because we're part of this generation that's created alternative routes to success. I believe we live in a digital day and age where all you need to succeed is Wi-Fi and a dream. In the words of Grammy Award winning rapper Macklemore, we are a generation of kids choosing love over a desk. And that is the generation I'm proud to be a part of. That is what it means to be a millennial. But many times this is all ignored because we're misunderstood. And because we're misunderstood by older generations, they vilify us to some degree. Oh, they're narcissistic, they can't be managed, they're entitled, blah, 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 blah. Their frustration and their confusion comes from one solid fact. They are holding us to expectations created for a world that no longer exists. Our parents and grandparents' generation had a very linear view of success and it went just like this. Point A was graduate from college with a degree. Point B was get a good job with good benefits. And point C was retirement. You did it, you're done, you're 65, you earned your pension, go golf. That was success. But our generation has completely discarded and rewritten these rules. We are not the manufacturing line generation. We are the maker generation. And the path to success in our world is as varied as the people who live in it. We've got millennials making millions of dollars off their YouTube channels and Instagram profiles and other millennials creating apps that are starting entirely new industries of business that people didn't even know could exist. This is all possible because we are the generation that is pushing the world forward. So yes, we may not get degrees. We may not stay in one job for very long. We may live at home with our parents longer while we figure out what we want to do with our lives. But this is all because we are custom building the life of our dreams and we're confident enough to take untraditional routes to get there. So instead of labeling millennials as narcissists and complaining that we're always on our phones, just remember that we are just as invested in experiencing and helping the world as we are ourselves and that what we're doing on our phones is not only changing our lives, but is shaping the future of our world. Millennials' desire to connect to passion and purpose and to build relationships has dramatically changed the marketplace, changes the way we talk about brand equity. Now it's changing the way leaders make decisions about their businesses. Here's what my best friend said to him, a CEO, COO of a company. Max is freaking out because he has three great opportunities. Max, you're not gonna be there forever. It's your first job. Chill, dude. I don't know why the millennials aren't loyal. It's a new life stage. I don't know why they're not engaged. Because they're not 28 with a mortgage and a baby. We all just need to like slow it down a bit. Because if we think it's a generational characteristic, we think we need to fix them. If we think it's a life stage, all we have to do is to understand it and shut up and listen. Millennials will make up the most of the leadership positions really soon. And as Hazen Winograd said, as millennials become CEOs or influence the fate of those who are, we will require that companies change their priorities so that we can bring them into alignment with the beliefs and values of our generation. I'll take it a step further and say to my millennial partners, Let's bring leadership into alignment with the beliefs and values of our generation. Let's leverage all that is unique and wonderful about our generation to be tomorrow's next great leader. Let's continue to be taught by those who desire to teach us. Combined with our natural instincts, we're gonna change leadership culture across the world. Up until that point, I had always enjoyed working with millennials. I get energy from being around them. But I had really always viewed my role as being someone who was there to teach them. And this experience opened me up to the idea that maybe we were there to teach each other. So these lessons continued over the next few years. We worked together to come up with a vision and a strategic plan. And those millennials really helped us understand what was needed to create a cutting edge business leadership program for the 21st century. 
Just this last year, we opened our brand new Center for Business Leadership. And at the core of this program is the idea that the millennials, the new generation, they have such tapped talent, this untapped talent that will allow us to come up with new ways of thinking. We invite them to sit at the table, we ask for their input, and when we run into problems that we're not sure how to solve, we ask those millennials what they would do. Are they always right? No. Do they need feedback and coaching? Absolutely. Most millennials, they know they need mentors and they're hungry for them. But in truth, we need their reverse mentorship as well. Millennials are not a threat. We view them as a threat because they think differently than we do. But if you think about it, this kind of interaction is how we feel about almost every kind of diversity.